children welcome to another episode of keys and bible on divine tv where souls are in read. and on today's episode we want to talk about nicodemus teaching on nicodemus how jesus christ finds nicodemus and how nicodemus finds jesus christ and both of them discuss they discuss on something very very important Yes, that is what we're going to do today. The Bible scripture we're going to be looking into today is John chapter 3. We start from verse 1 to the last verse. We're going to read everything. The teaching is on Nicodemus. Yeah. I want to read John, John chapter 3, verse 1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these same miracles that thou doest except God be with him. You know, he sat down, he looked at everything Jesus Christ had been doing, all the miracles he had been performing. And he had to look at, you know, being a Pharisee, he had to sit down and be, ah, who can do this? Ah. It's not just ordinary person. It is the person that God sent from heaven that can do this. And truly, he was sent. And he, he confirmed it. He said, yes, these miracles can only be done by those that God himself sent. And that was what he said in verse 2. He said, the same came to Jesus by night, that is Nicodemus, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And verse 3 now says, Jesus answered and said unto him, now the discussion wants to start now, and Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus told Nicodemus, and he told him that, see, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus too now saw, he heard what Jesus Christ said, and discussion now starting. Then verse 4 now says, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old, because Nicodemus was old, so he was now thinking that, ah, how can I now, now be born again? Ah, you know, I have been born. How can I now enter my mother and be born again? See what he says again. He said, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus now answered and said, no, no, it's not like that. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except the man be born of what? Water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus now told him that, see, what I'm talking about is not that you go back to your mother and ask your mother to open her womb and you enter the womb and you'll be born again. No, that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you have to be born of water and of spirit. When this happened, then you'll be born again. Let's go on. Verse 5. Now say, verse 6. Now says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And verse 7 now says, Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. You know, he, 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 he being a Pharisee, he believed that yes, they, they, they believed that they, we have Pharisees, we have Sadducees. Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he believed that Jesus Christ, with everything he was doing, that he was sent. And he was like, ah, so, but how can I now how can I do it in order to be born again? And he was told, being a Pharisee is not only the basis for you to be born again. Knowing God or knowing whether it was God that sent Jesus Christ, that was doing miracles, like he confirmed in verse 2, wasn't only basis of being born again. But you have, like it is being said in verse 5, you have to be born 
of water and of spirit. Don't forget those two words of water and of spirit. And we are still going to talk more on it. When Nicodemus told Jesus that he believed that Jesus had come from God, because of the signs and the wonders in which he saw, Jesus told him that nobody will see the kingdom of God until they were born again. He's telling us that you too worship me at home. Until you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You are not as old as Nicodemus. Everybody, be old, be young, need to be born again, need to be regenerated, need to confess Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. It's still good for you teenagers watching me and children, for the basic, you know, you're just growing now, for you to confess him as your personal Lord and Savior, and for you to walk with him. As you confess him, you know, it's like you are asking him that, see, I am I'm, I'm yours now, and I want to be with you by listening to him. You know, how you can come in with him, you can come in with him in prayer, like I've said in the past episode, you can come in with him through the study of the scripture. When you come to him, now you are telling him that, see, you want to be on his side. So that means his manual, the guide, which we take you through the Bible. You need to take it, sit down with it and study. I know what he's saying about you. Because we have a lot of things in the society now that will want to define you in another way. That will want to make you to be whom God has not called you to be. But the only thing that can make you to understand or to know more about what God has said about your life is the manual. And the manual is the word of God. You need to sit down with the word of God. You need to study it like Nicodemus. Now that Nicodemus came to Christ Jesus, asked him that he wants to be born again because he wants to enter the kingdom of God. God has told him he needs to be born of water and of spirit. And now you can understand the thing of the spirit is by studying. Sit down with the word of God. Then when you go to church on Sunday in your children's department, in your teenagers' department, you need to sit down as your teachers are teaching you. You listen to everything they are saying. You know you have a manual. You sit down with that manual, you read it, you study, and you know what that place is saying about stealing. You know what that place is saying about fighting. You know what that place is saying about gossiping. You know what that place is saying about all things that are not right and by staying away from them. So, Nicodemus asks how a grown man can be born again. You know, with his understanding, he was like, I'm grown now. How can they be telling me to be born again? And Jesus explained that a person needs to be born again of water and of spirit of God in order to be able to see the kingdom of God. You know, I believe you want to see the the kingdom of God. I want to see the kingdom of God. We want to reign with him in his kingdom. We want to go with him when he comes. And we can only do this when we are on his side. We can only do this when we understand who he is. We can only do this when we are staying where he wants us to stay. We can only do this by staying away from every wrong things. Things are not right. Things that we know that God does not like. And do you know that part of the things that God does not like, they are part of the things that our parents are telling us not to do. Yes, they are part of what our parents are telling us not to do. They will tell us not to fight. God does not want us to fight. They will tell us not to lie. God does not want us to lie. Let me go on and see what happened, what Nicodemus did. In verse 8, it says, the wind bloweth where it's listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it coming and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Let me take it again. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But cannot tell where it's coming and whether it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. I want to quickly go on a break. When we come back, we continue from where I stopped. <music> 
Enjoy inspirational, informative, and soul-lifting Christian programs such as Christian Parenting and Homefront, Light After Darkness, Fulfilling the Mandate, Kids and Bible, Movies Review, Shepherd's Spouse, Kingdom Stars, Things Perspectives, My Next Gospel Event, and lots more on Divine Television. Download Divine TV mobile app on Google Play Store or watch on our YouTube channel. You can also visit www.tvdivine.net. Divine TV and reaching souls through the gospel of Christ. You welcome back. I read verse 8 and I told us that the topic is teaching of Nicodemus. The discussion that happened between Nicodemus and Jesus. Nicodemus a Pharisee. Jesus Christ a Messiah. Whom Nicodemus called Rabbi because he was teaching the word of God. And before I went on a break, I read verse 8. I will take it again. The wind blow it, where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it's coming and whether it's great. So it's everyone that is born of the Spirit. You know, I said we have to be born of two things if you are born again. The first is water. The second one is Spirit. So verse 8 talked about the Spirit now. You know, when wind blow, you blow it. You cannot say how, where it's coming from, how it go. That is how it is with the Spirit. When we talk about the things of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God can only, you can only understand the things of God by His Spirit. Because the Bible says God is Spirit. And He said those that must worship Him, they must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And do you know there's only one thing? The Holy Spirit eats. Do you know Holy Spirit have a food? Mm. You don't know. Holy Spirit have food. The food that Holy Spirit eats is the Word of God. As the Word of God grows in you, mm, that is how the fruits. Like Bible said in Galatians 5.22, He said these are the fruits of the Spirit. He talks about love. He talks about peace. He talks about patience. He talks about endurance. He talks about self-control. He talks about long suffering. He talks about, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, to be tender. All these things, they are the fruits that comes from the Spirit of God. You know, when you have, when you see a mango tree, mango tree can only produce mango fruit. Orange tree can only produce orange fruits. Spirits of God can only produce things that are good. Fruits that are good. Love. Self-control. Lost suffering. Endurance. These are the things that is fruits. The Spirit of God will produce as fruit. So if a child of God that you are born again, that you have accepted Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, just like the way Nicodemus came to Christ and tells him that, see, all these things you are doing, they can only be done by whom God has sent. If you do all this, you will see yourself producing all this fruit because you have come to the side of God. Verse 9 now says, Nicodemus now answered and said unto him, How can this thing be? Verse 10 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Had thou a master of history and may not this thing? You know, I told you that he's a Pharisee. He's a Pharisee and you know Pharisees, they are scholars. They know things about God. They've read things that people do not know. Pharisees, they know them. But when it comes to issue of being born again, he did not know it. You know? The things of God can only be known, can only be understood by those who are on God's side. When he has a question, Jesus now answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of history? And when of these things, we are reading John chapter 3. And I'm moving to verse 11 now. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know 
and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No, it's Jesus Christ that is talking, talking to Nicodemus. And no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, which is Christ Jesus himself. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus Christ is telling Nicodemus now. He's discussing with Nicodemus. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life comes after you have known God. When we talk about something everlasting, it's something that does not have end. It's something that goes on and on and on and on and on. And like it has been said that one day, this world that we are in, we come to an end. Yes, it will come to an end. Rapture will come. And it is only those that on Christ's side, Christ Jesus' side, that will go with him. Those that are not on his side, they will not go anywhere. And when it's rapture now comes, it is only those that are, that are born again, that have given their life to Christ Jesus, that will go with him. And every other person that did not give their life, they will be on the side of the devil. And I know, as you are watching me, that you don't want to be on the side of the devil. You want to be on the side of God. And that is why now you must listen, just like the way Jesus Christ taught Nicodemus here. You must listen to everything your parents are teaching you. I mean the right path they are laying down for you, for you to go through. You must go through them. You must listen to their instructions. You must, and I've told us in the last episode, I said it's not only about your parents alone. People around you, your pastors, your family friends that are telling you to do good, not those that are telling you to do bad, no. Those that are telling you to do good, they are telling you to do what God wants and you need to go by them in order to be on the side of God. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That was the reason why Jesus Christ came. He came that we might be saved, that I should be saved, and you should be saved, with your friends and your family members should be saved. That was the reason why he came. It's not that he came to come and condemn us. No. You will see from here his discussion with Nicodemus. He didn't condemn Nicodemus, no. Even Nicodemus that was his call, that, know, that knows a lot and lot about, uh, uh, about God, that have studied, that have know this, know that, but little things about being born again, he did not know. But I like Nicodemus. He asked questions. He came to him, he asked questions. He didn't look at him and be like, ah, I know all things now. Do I need to ask anybody anything? No. But he saw something in Christ's Jesus' life. He saw something in his life. And that was why he could say, please, what do you say about this? And everything Jesus Christ was saying, he held on to them. He believed because he had seen God in him. The verse 18 also says, He that believeth on him, he is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. What is that name? And the only begotten Son of God. Can you tell me what the name is? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus, when we give our life to him, when we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, by confessing him, we will say that we'll go with him, by walking with him. Do you know, the Bible says something in Romans 10. 10. He said, with acts, man believeth unto righteousness, but with mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So before salvation will come, there must be confession. So you must confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior, then walk with him. 
The reason why you need to work with him so that you'll be sanctified, so that you'll be growing, so that you know more about him, so that you'll be able to, to stay with him, to hear from him. When you do all this, you will see that you'll be able to go on with him. We've been talking about teaching of Nicodemus. Jesus Christ taught Nicodemus about the kingdom of God, about how to be born again, and about how to enter into the kingdom of God. We want to quickly go on a break now. When we come back, we're going to continue. Enjoy inspirational, informative, and soul-lifting Christian programs, such as Christian Parenting and Homefront, Light After Darkness, Fulfilling the Mandate, Kids and Bible, Movies Review, Shepherd's Spouse, Kingdom Stars, Things Perspectives, My Next Gospel Event, and lots more on Divine Television. Download Divine TV mobile app on Google Play Store or watch on our YouTube channel. You can also visit www.tvdivine.net. Divine TV and reaching souls through the Gospel of Christ. You welcome back. This is Tiki's and Bible on Divine TV. I've been talking about Nicodemus and our Bible that we studied today was John 3. John chapter 3. And we started from verse 1. Now we are moving to verse 19. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because they are these were even for everyone that dwells even hated the light neither come into the light less is the should be reproved you know this jesus christ we are talking about is light it's light wherever he is darkness needs to move away and that is the reason why he said we should allow him to come into our lives you know when it comes into our life you know you see yourself your life being changed being transformed you see darkness moving away moving away moving away because light has come light has come to stay light has come to do it and that is the reason why you need to tell your friends as you have accepted him as your personal lord and savior tell your friends to accept him too so that when it comes, you and everybody in your family, your friends, everybody, you go with him. We go with him when he comes. Because when it Christ, Christ Jesus comes, there will be a lot of war in the world. And we don't want to face that. We want to go with him. We don't want to face anything negative. We need to be on the side. Verse 21 says, But he that doeth truth come into the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After this thing came, Jesus has said, and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptized in Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. All this time, John the Baptist was not cast into prison. You know, I talked about water and the spirit. I've talked about the spirit. Now I want to talk about water. Water, baptism, is after you have accepted Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you have followed his teachings. And you've, you, you've gone through schools. There are some, they say, baptismal class. You have gone through it. They have taught you about things you need to know. That is where you now go for baptism. The baptism, they will dip you into water in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And they will bring you out. When they bring you out, when you are being brought out like that, it's like you are being taken down, washed, everything that not of God, what in the water, taken away. And as you are coming up, you come up into good life. You come up into a new life entirely. That is dipping down, then coming up, take you up out of the water in the name of the Father, 
of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When this is being done, just like the way John the Baptist did it, and Jesus Christ himself, he came, he laid the example. We saw it and he did it. He baptized. That is when the issue of the water comes in. So these two needs to be done. You need to know him. You need to confess him as your personal Lord and Savior. You need to walk with him and you need to go with him. You may be saying, ah, Auntie Kemi, this thing you are saying, is it easy like that? Yes, it's very easy. David is easy. So look, this thing I said is very easy. All of you watching me at home is very easy. Tell your friends to give our life to Christ Jesus is very easy. You can do it by prayer. You know, I told you Romans 10, 10 says, you believe with your heart, but you confess with your mouth. So when you, have, you sit down and you, 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 you call him, Father, forgive me all my sins. Everything I've done wrong. Forgive me. Today I come to you. Accept me as your own. Write my name in the book of life and give me the grace to continue with you. Give me the grace to walk with you. Give me the grace to do your will. You pray this prayer and you will now commit all your ways and everything to God's hands. And you go home with him. And when you, after you have done this, go on to the stage of being baptized by going through the class. If there is a certain class in your church that you need to go through, baptismal class, go through it. If there are teachings that you need to go through, go through it. And when you do all this, then you'll be baptized. And when you are baptized, you continue working in line to whatever Christ Jesus wants you to do, just like the way he told Nicodemus. Verse 24 says, For John was not yet cast into prison then. Then 25 then, there arose a question between some of John's uh, disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearing witness, behold, the same baptized, and no man came to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it being given him from heaven. You yourself bear witness that I said, I'm not the Christ, but that I am said before him. Verse 29. He that are the bride is a bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, we standing and hearing him, rejoiced greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled because Jesus Christ was already around. So he was happy. He was what he was doing. You know, he was a foreign forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was sent ahead. And he was doing what he's supposed to do for Christ. He must increase and must decrease. That is John talking now. He that coming from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that coming from heaven is above all, and what he has seen and heard, that he testify, and no man receive his testimony. He that has received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has said, speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and has given all things into his hand. And he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. I know you don't want the wrath of God to abide on you. I know that was what Nicodemus saw. That he made him to write to, run to Jesus and ask him questions. And there were good discussions between two of them. And he understood that day what he's supposed to do. That he needs to come to Christ. He needs to be born of water. And he needs to be born of spirit. Just like the way I'm telling you too. As you are looking at him, me now at home. You need to be born again. You need to know him. You need to come to his side. It is when you come to his side that you will be, that, 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 that his shield will be around you. It is when you be on the side that everything about him will surround you. That is when the issue of eternity will come in. And I know you want to reign with him. And I want to reign with him too. I've told you how to do it. Don't forget. Call him. Jesus, I believed that you came to die for me. I believe in you. I trust in you. Write my name in the book of life. Forgive me all my sins. All the sins I have sinned. Forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. And give me the grace to continue to walk with you. I know. See, when you do this, you have confessed. 
and you're on this side. The next step is just to be baptized. Go to your church. Tell them, I have accepted Christ Jesus. Now, I want to go through teachings of baptism in order to be baptized. When you do all this, continue working with him and will not be expecting his coming back. It is my prayer that when he comes, we will go with him in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know that. Tell your friends that see, Jesus is the best. Jesus is the light, is the light of the world, and you need to, uh, to walk in that light. Walking in the light is walking with Christ Jesus. Yes, tell your friends, walking in the light is walking with Christ Jesus. The walking with Christ Jesus is walking in the light. Now, the moral of the lesson is, it is important to be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of of the Holy Spirit. These three things must come in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. These are the three things that were told Nicodemus when Jesus Christ discussed with him. This is where we're going to be drawing the curtain. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Divine TV, and download on Google Play Store, Divine TV. We are souls are in need. I remain your beautiful host. Until we are coming to the love of the day. Thank you. Bye.